Welcome everybody to today's video and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this image in Adobe Photoshop. Now this is by no means going to be a full tutorial. It's only showing you the basics of what I did. And of course there's many different ways to do it and I am still learning. So hopefully you guys learn something new from this. And if you have more in-depth questions, Feel free to drop in on my Twitch channel. I stream every Sunday, Monday, and Wednesday afternoon. And with Sunday mainly being set aside for streams like this. So if you have questions, feel free to pop in, ask them while I'm live. So first thing I do is I open up a new document and I'm gonna do it at 3840 by 2160. Now that is 4K resolution. So I usually go with 300 pixels per inch, RGB 16, transparent. Now you don't have to go transparent. I like to go transparent. That way I just have a blank canvas. And there we go. Once that is open, we're gonna have to get our images that we're gonna use. For this example, I already chose all the pictures I'm going to be using for this. So all the pictures in here I'm going to use in some way or form to try and form this final image. Now, what you want to start off with is some sort of picture that's going to be your middle ground. So that is not going to be the foreground, it's not going to be background, but you want to try and find something that is pretty big, pretty high quality. And for this one, I chose this. As you can see, it has Nice depth, but it also comes towards you pretty close. Make that. And now, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to start erasing. You'd rather want to make a mask, so go down to the layer mask. Once you're on the layer mask, what you're going to do is you're going to take the paint tool, and this is very important. With the paint tool, black removes, white shows again. So kind of give you an example, we are on black. Black takes away, if we switch this around to white, that brings it back. So anytime you're using a black brush, you will be removing background. Turn up the hardness on that. And then we're just gonna paint away the sky. Now you don't wanna remove too much of the background as you might wanna use it in a later stage. For me, I kind of removed this part as well. And for that, you kind of use a softer brush to make sure that it still kind of keeps a soft edge while you're erasing that. So let's zoom in a little. The quick zoom is holding Alt and then just scrolling with your mouse wheel. That is the quick way zoom in and out now with something like this where you're kind of editing out the mountain you can always edit your own shape out as the way a mountain looks is not always fixed so as long as you kind of have a rough ish shape at the end of this, it should look fine. So now we are left with this scene. Now, of course, we want to add a little bit more layers to that. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to click on that layer, control G, make that a group and call it the middle ground. You will see why we're grouping up everything later. It just makes it easier to find everything. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add the mountain image. And before we kind of move it, I want to add a mask and to kind of brush away. I already know what part I'm using. So I just want to start brushing away so it's easier for me to see where I need to place it. So you can always do this because this is a non-destructive method. So you're not actually destroying anything by doing this. So then you just control T, control T 
activates that layer for movement and just drag it below that layer. Now we're just going to try and line it up as best possible to try and get that image to actually look good. Of course, soft brushes are amazing. Don't forget to use them as they kind of make the transition between two layers a lot softer so you can actually blend them in a little better. Now we're not too worried about the rest of this. We will fix this a little later. So what we can do next is get the magic wand tool, but we're on the long, wrong layer. Kind of just select the mountain. Control shift I to inverse that selection. And that way we can kind of go over the mountain without having to worry too much about whether or not we are actually removing anything else. So now we have this scene kind of starting to create a little bit more of a scene, starting to look like something. And then we can add the next piece, which is going to be the background. So for the background, I use this image. And let's kind of move this up. So we have the sun right there at the back. So I'm going to take the middle ground again. We're going to take a brush, a nice soft brush. We don't want it too hard. Then we're just going to remove this section as well. Because I kind of like the mountains here at the back. Just undo that. Let's take the middle ground. Let's move it down a little. Now, while we are here, I'm going to quickly add a layer. We're going to paint this layer black. So if you look at this layer, it's completely dark. So I'm going to keep it at the top for now. And then what you're going to do is you're going to actually go to filter. And you're going to go to render. You go down into render and you can make a lens flare. Now there's a few lens flares to pick from. I'm going to pick this one. So once we have that lens flare, you can just go to the layer mask and just make it a screen. So the screen, what it does, is it actually removes all the black. So what you can also do to try to remove it even more, you can control L, brings out the levels, then you can drag these in. And that kind of makes the whites whiter, the blacks blacker, which means it's just going to remove that background, back dark background a little better. And all I'm doing is putting it on that sun. And that is it. So that adds that little bit of a light flare to the sun. And it just makes it pop out a little better. So you can always move this around a little bit more. I'm going to keep it like this so we kind of get that light flare in there as well. So now we've made our artificial light source. So next up, we're going to quickly add the rock on the right. So with this, this is also going to have to be a top layer. So let's take out that. Let's make an image mask. Take the brush tool. You can kind of make it big. And just start painting away. Just make the hardness completely hard so we can remove this entire scene. So now we kind of place this rock in a position where it fills up most of this backspace because there's a lot of layers that aren't blended too well. There's a lot of layers that need to be blended in. And the more you can cover up, the better it is for your image at the end of the day. So if we do it like that, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now, as you can see, with this one, the selection tool is not that not that accurate so what you can always do is you can kind of zoom in and you can 
individually select every single port and don't be too worried if it's not 100% perfect. You just kind of want to get the most. Remember to control shift I because you want to select the inverse so you can actually take your brush and brush away the background. So there we go. We got most of the background removed. Still got a few pieces right here. Now another trick you can always do as well before you even start doing this is you can go on the image, control L, kind of make the darks darker, try and get a little bit more of a contrast and make your whites whiter. But as you can see, that actually makes it worse. But now we have a lot more contrast on these pieces. So it makes it a whole lot better to try and select them. Now, once again, you got Control Shift I. Control I actually inverts. So remember that if you want to inverse select, it is Control I. So now as you can see, you, can, you can't see this lines anymore. I kind of remove this. See it's a solid line and this little block over there. So if you close it up, you've hidden all of that. So let's go and add the second rock. Now this is a much smaller rock. So we're gonna have to be a little bit more aware of what we're gonna do with it. So once we've placed it, we can go add Another clipping mask, get your black brush out, start removing as much as you possibly can. For this one, I am using a very, very, very soft brush because you kind of want to fade everything to low in. You see all this the nice snowy parts, you can kind of just fade them in. We're just gonna move this down to this location. So now that we have the rocks and everything in, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the foreground. For the foreground, I use this image, which I then just kind of scaled up a little. You might lose a lot of quality, but you got to remember that this is only going to be the foreground and it's going to co be covered up again. So what I like to do is firstly go make a clipping mask, take my brush to the hardest on black, and then just brush away everything I don't need. So now we move this below the two rock layers. And as you can see, that kind of blends in this foreground with that background. So I'm just gonna move it up a little bit more and kind of just select that. I wanna make a little bit more of a foreground scene. Now, while we're busy with the foreground, I'm gonna also add this little foreground ice splash. So this ice splash, the whole thing about that is you want it to kind of cover up the imperfections in the scene. So you have that as a layer to kind of prevent people from seeing all of the chaos that's going on. So if we can kind of take that, you don't want to add it too much. You don't want to add it too high. You kind of want it to be in this layer, but you kind of still want to see that foreground. And um, you can always go and change the opacity of this as well. If you want to kind of just have it blend in, you can have it at around 70%. That way it's still kind of see through. It's not that obvious. And it's only there to kind of break that solid line. Now that we have done all of that, we're going to bring in our first ATAT. So once again, start off image mask. This is kind of how we're going to do everything from now on. Add an image. You're going to make an image mask. 
You're just going to brush away as much as you possibly can before you even start. And then I'm going to show you another thing you can always do. You can add an effect and you can go to brightness and contrast. So you can turn down the brightness and then you can turn up the contrast. But as you can see, this kind of changes the entire picture. So once you have that, remember to go and click on this little thing that clips it and that only makes it possible to change this image. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump up the contrast so that it's much easier to select. So if we go to Magic Wand, select tool, as you can see, it is just so much easier to select everything. Now, the way you want to place this ATAT is that it kind of covers up as much of that scene between this mountain and this middle ground. So anywhere kind of in this region where it breaks that solid line is perfect. So I'm going to keep it at this line. It's kind of hidden the feet as well. So I feel that this is kind of perfect. Now the next thing that's going to go in is we're going to be placing in the second ATAT. -AT. Now for this ATAT we actually had to flip it. So you right click on it and you just say flip horizontally. That way it just flips it around. And then you have that ATAT -AT right over there. So let's start by adding Kylo Ren. Making an image mask. And just kind of brushing away at this point. Select the background much as you possibly can take your brush make sure it's on black make sure it's on a hard setting and just remove all of this background now that that's done you can take T let's move in behind the rocks but in front of the foreground now it's always a good idea to try and add them in front of like the rocks to kind of give that depth. And remember that his hips are going to be sort of on the horizon line. So now that we have him in, we're going to do another thing. We're actually going to go and control J to make a copy of that. Just going to select both control G, make it in a group. And we're going to take the top layer, hide the bottom layer over to the mask and what we're going to do is you want to remove the entire Kylo Ren. And as you can see there's no more Kylo Ren in this picture. It is only the lightsaber. What you can do is you're going to right click just just a little to the right of the name and then you're going to say outer glow. So there's a few things bevel stroke but we only want the outer glow as you can see, if you select red, it kind of gives an outer glow to that. Now, as you can see, we had a missed the part over there. Missed the part over there. And now you have this outer glow, which kind of simulates the glow of the lightsaber. And once you add him back in, you have the lightsaber that glows. So if you take that out, that is before and after. The basics when it comes to color grading is you want to try and get everything to a neutral color so that everything kind of matches up and that nothing is sort of of a different color compared to everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the background. Once you're in the background, we want to go to this little adjustment layer, add brightness and contrast and also add a U and saturation curve. Now, when you're creating these curves, remember to click on this or you can go on the line and just holding the alt button, you'll see it kind of does that little thing when you get on the line and then that changes. That makes it that that only affects that image. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn down the brightness a little in the background. You want to kind of turn down the contrast. So it looks like it's in the distance. It's not that contrasty, not that bright, you know, it's just kind of there in the background. So 
once we've done that we move over to U and saturation then you're gonna press on colorize that means it's just gonna give it a color kind of just move it over to the side gonna desaturize it a little but keep it that bluish color you can lighten it up you can lower down the lightness bring it up a little so it kind of looks like it's fading into the back once you've done that, you're gonna go over to the left mountain. Now remember, you can always play around with this. I always like to add them in. And then once they're in, play around with it a little. And then as soon as I've done playing around with them, I then kind of adjust everything once I know how everything is matching. So if we kind of reduce contrast in this as well, kind of bring down the brightness, Bring it up a little, maybe. And then use saturation. Go to the use saturation page. Why is it not going there? There we go. Colorize. And then we bring it up once again to kind of bring it to this neutral little bluish color. And then what I also like to do, is this, thing, this is something I did on the other image is take a bigger brush because the bigger brush the lighter the stroke is going to be then i just kind of went over the top simulated kind of being being high into the clouds and it's kind of just you know falling away in that little cloud effect so it kind of fades away now we move over to the AT, at on the left. Kind of do a brightness. It already has a brightness curve. So let's add the UN saturation curve. Remember to press Alt and do that. I'm just going to colorize it. Make it blue. So it kind of matches in with the scene. What you can also do is just add a new layer. Now what you do is you kind of use the select tool again. You select the part you want to paint, go over to your layer, select your paintbrush, and you kind of just slowly fade over. Now of course this looks weird. It does look weird. It's something you need to get used to. But once you zoom out, it actually looks correct. So that is one thing you need to kind of get used to is that is gonna look strange to just paint it on. But once you zoom out, it kind of adds to that point. Now the same thing goes with Kylo Ren. You kind of want to take a layer, that's a top layer. You want to go into the Kylo Ren. You want to select parts that you actually want to add color to. So let's say this part. Let's just go back. Let's just say you want to add some red reflection on that part. Go to that layer, take the brush, take a red, and you just kind of just barely brush a color on. Now I know that's not barely brushing a color, but you take the eraser, have a big eraser, kind of increase that size. Just kind of feather it along those lines and then once you deselect this it will add a color glow so then of course you can just try and mask out certain areas so let's say we want to add some more on his hand but we don't want to do this part again So of course you go into your Kylo Ren layer, select the arm, go into layer two, select your brush, and you kind of just add a little bit of red to that. You take your eraser, and then you just kind of feather over that again. To dim that out, once you deselect this and you zoom out, it just adds that little glow. Now, once you've done all of this, you add you add some light on everything. 
what you do, you add some red on these rocks, you add everything. I then took this picture, went to Lightroom, add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of um, hue and saturation once again. I turned it down a little bit more blue. So if you go to the color temperature, I went a little to the blue side, kind of went more bluish with the sh shadows as well, and kind of make that blue scene pop. I also added some contrast. I removed some of the brightness. I removed some of the exposure to kind of just match it out. But at the end of the day, it's all up to you as the artist. You have the freedom to select what you want to do, how you want to do it. And this is kind of the basic tools of everything I use. You can add the type of layer it is. So you can move over and actually make it lighten. You can make it a screen. So you can do so many things. Because as you see, if we kind of make it a screen, it looks different, color dodge. It will kind of add a little different effect. It looks a little bit more natural as if it's glowing on the edge. And it kind of makes that folds. So yeah, at the end of the day, you're gonna have to try and find something. So let me just zoom in quickly, show this again. So this is on normal. It kind of just adds that. And if you kind of go down, multiply, add all these things, and you go to color dodge. Color dodge kind of makes it look like it is actually coming from the left bottom side and it's moving up. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys learned something new. If you did like and learn something new, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It takes you one second. It took me quite a few hours to make this piece. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you would like to see me make more videos like this, leave them down in the description below or jump into my stream. I am live every Sunday, Monday and Wednesday afternoon. Come ask me a few questions if you have any or tell me if you want me to do more stuff like this. Until next time. Cheers.